All right, let's start the second session in the morning. So the next speaker is Taiji Suzuki from, from UK AIT. He will be talking about representation theory and optimization of CRM. Okay, please. Okay, so thank you. Thanks so much for your kind introduction. So, okay, um, today I want to talk about uh, uh, the overview of our recent results on the representation theory and the optimization of neural networks. Okay, um, so in, in our group, we are working on the deep learning theories. Okay, so you have seen that many right, very great success of deep learning in many applications, like large language models and the generative models. And so basically we want to clarify why deep learning works so well in these kind of many applications. This is uh, the goal of our, our, our group, okay? So actually to tackle this problem, so we are working on deep learning theories from these kind of three topics. Uh, one is a uh, representationality, and, uh, and the other one is uh, generalization ability, and the, the final one is uh, optimization ability, okay? So today I basically, I want to talk about the representation ability and optimization ability, okay? So in the first half, I will talk about a kind of non-parametric regression analysis of transformers, okay? And in the later half, I will talk about some optimization. So in more precisely, I will talk about the Langevin time, mean field Langevin dynamics to optimize the mean field neural network, okay? So let's move on to the first half. Uh, okay, so this is a joint work with uh, Shokichi Takahura. He's a master student of my, my group, okay? So you know that the transformer is a very important structure. So it is a very important architecture uh, in the large language models. So without transformers, we don't have that great success of large language models like uh, GPT-3. Okay, so this is a very important architecture. So we want to, uh, we want to analyze the, a kind of a performance of transformers, okay? And, and surprisingly, the transformer is also used for vision tasks, like, like in the VRTs, the transformer is used. And, yeah, so there are also some other tech, uh, architecture like uh, combination of transformers and the CNN, but, it, but anyway, so the transformer is, is also very, very useful in many tasks. So then, so we want to, I want to analyze the, the, the performance of transformer from, from the non-parametric statistical viewpoint. So this is our, what I want to do here, okay? And so the, to analyze that, so let us consider a very simple situation. So that is a sequence to sequence problem, okay? The input to X, is the infinite length uh, sequences of uh, uh, infinite length sequence of the tokens. The each token is a d-dimensional uh, real vectors. So this is the input. For that input, input so that the, the infinite sequence, then we have an output y. So this is also infinite dimensional sequence. So this is a sequence of real values. Okay. The, the input output relation between x and y is represented by the true function f naught. Okay. F naught takes the, the infinite uh, that infinite with this uh, sequence x, and then it, it can output that sequence y. Okay, and so so suppose that we have an end observation through this model. Okay, the y i is given by f not x i plus some Gaussian noise gzi. So Gaussian noise is added to each component of y i. So in the iid case, right? in iid manners. Okay? So that from this end observations, we want to estimate f not so as as precisely as possible. This is uh, what we want to do. So as an assumption of the true function, so we assume some shift equivalence. That means that if you shift the input with the K index, then output should, should also shift that with K index. So we assume that some um, the shift, shift invariance, equi equivalence of the uh, target true functions. Okay, okay so to estimate the, this input and output relations, so, and so we use a, so, a kind of simplified transformer model. So in, in, in this model, so there is no recursive um, structure through the time, but, but, but anyway, so it is a kind of, kind of composition of a fully connected neural network and attention layers. So, so we, we stack the fully connected layers and uh, attentions. So this is our, our, uh, our model, okay? And so, okay, so look, let, 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 let's look at one token, x0. So this is our, so this is one token. For each tokens, you apply fully, fully connected neural network. This is a kind of nonlinear transformation. So after that, you apply a set of functions. Then after that, you apply the fully connected network. So we repeated this. Okay, so this is a, the, our model. And so in the set of attentions, so for the x0, so, so uh, I'm abusing the notation, I'm sorry. So x0 is a nonlinearly transformed the feature of the token x0. So for the, so for the, for the features or the one, one token uh, that, is our, that I'm interested in, is updated through this attention mechanism. Okay. 
So the attention mechanism, uh, the attention is given by this inequality. So here, here in the first term, there is a, a kind of values. So this is a linear transformation of the features of the other tokens. Okay. So the, the, the tokens near the neighbor, the tokens which are in the neighborhood of uh, these tokens. So it is linearly transformed by some vector, uh, some matrix. And, and this is multiplied by some softmax vector. The softmax is, uh, is, uh, is given by the similarity vector AH. So similarity vector AH is, uh, is basically the inner product between the features of the, the different tokens, uh, the, the, the current token and the, the other tokens. So we take the inner product and we obtain some similarity between the tokens. Then that, that, that similarity is inputted in this, into the softmax. And then, so this is this can be the, the probability vectors. So this is multiplied to the features of the, 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 the sequence of the tokens, sequence of the token features. Then we get some value. Okay? This this is added to the, the current feature. So then the feature is updated. Okay. So um, so of course there is some linear transformation K, B H and K H Q H. But, but anyway, so the, the basic structure is something like that. Okay, so then we, we also assume that there are similar heads, like H equal one to H, and we, we sum up the, the, the output from each head, and then we get uh, this, uh, this, this modification values. Okay. So we add this, we, we, by, by using this, then we modify the, the, the features. So this is our set of partition structure. Okay. But the, the difficulty here is that, so the interaction between tokens are captured only through the attentions. There is no interaction between tokens other than the set of attentions. So we needed to convey the information between the, the token, tokens through only the through the attentions. So there is no other the, other connection. So that is our, the difficulties. And moreover, so we, we I, I should say that that the, the parameters through the connected neural network should be shared among the all the tokens, and also that the, the parameters of the set of attentions are also shared. With uh, other tokens, uh, with uh, all tokens. So then the question is, can we realize a complicated multivariate nonlinear function uh, through this kind of architectures? Then, so this is our, our my questions. The first question. So the other one is that so the input is like infinite dimensional. So because the input is very long sequence, so then there could appear that the causal dimensionality. Okay, so, so maybe so we cannot avoid the causal dimensionality, but. Uh, Maybe so under some structure of the true input output uh, uh, relations, maybe so we can avoid the causal dimensionality. So then the question is, so can we avoid the causal dimensionality by using the, some, some special property of the attention mechanism? So this is a, the second question. Question, so yeah. you said input is infinite dimensional, right. but with still attention, obviously you consider it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is a, okay, so that's a good point. So. This can be infinite with this, but, but here so we consider a, um, a kind of a, a sufficiently large with this. So the minus B and the B is sufficiently large. So yeah, so in other words, the, the relation between the tokens should we decay as the as the, as the, the, the gap will goes up. So then we can neglect the, the interaction between very far away tokens. So we cut at some point. Yeah. But, but of course, so this is a, this a model, so that maybe so the, in the, in the true, true function can have our interaction to the infinitely um, uh, the far away tokens, but it should be very small. So, okay. Thank you. Okay, so, okay, so the, there are many works on the transformer analysis. So maybe the most important one is the universal approximation ability of a transformer. So it can, transformer can approximate any sequence to sequence so functions, but they analyze as a finite length uh, property. And also, so they show the Turing completeness of the transformers. But anyway, so, so what we want to do here is like more um, qualified, co um, quantitative analysis of the, some a kind of approximation ability or uh, so estimation ability. So that is what we want to do. Okay. So, um, so to obtain uh, some quantified, uh, 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 no, no, uh, uh, yeah, quantified. So to obtain some uh, some estimation or approximation errors. Depending on the, the some structure of the true function, so we assume some smoothness of the true function. So this is a very um, well, so usual way in a non-parametric statistics. Okay, so okay, so remember that. So the, here, here is a sequence to sequence function for some, uh, uh, some for for some output y zero. So this is a, some specific output, 
So there are many tokens, then maybe depending on the output, maybe so the importance of the input tokens could be different. So maybe the x0 could be the most important for this output. Maybe it's the x minus one could be not so important for this output. So the, the, so for each token, so there could be, there is some importance, so okay. So then, so how to represent the importance in a mathematical way? So and to, to represent that importance, so we, as we consider some a kind of smoothness, okay? In what, what is the smoothness, okay? So if the x0 is very important for the output of y0, so then if x0 is changed, so then the output should be changed so much. So because x0 is very important, it, it, it has a great impact to the output. So that means that that, that function, that this the true input output relation is not smooth with respect to x0. So then smoothness, uh, so if you uh, denote the, the smoothness is AI, so then the, the A0 that, that corresponds to the, the token x0 is, is not, is it small, so like the smoothness is small. And in a, if there, so in other words, in, in, in another case, if x, so now so x, if x1, x, x minus one is not so important for the output of y0, so then even if you change the x minus one a little bit, then it, it, does, it doesn't change so much, the, it doesn't change the output so much. So then in that case, the, 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 the true function is smooth with respect to the x minus one, okay? So the smoothness is defined by like this. So, so AI represents the how many times we can differentiate the true function with respect to the, 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 some specific tokens, okay? If AI is large, so then the true function can be AI times differentiable with respect to that some token XI. So if AI is very large, so it is very smooth. If AI is small, so then it is not so smooth. So, so then that means that AI represents the smoothness. So we, 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 we assume this kind of a structure here. But uh, so the importance is not fixed across the input. So maybe the importance could be changed depending on the input. So we can also, we, we, we also want to consider the smoothness depending on the input. For, for each input X, the neighborhood, so for neighborhood of it, such input, uh, the smoothness could be changed. So then maybe for some input, the smoothness, there are some smoothness values, but for some other uh, inputs, maybe the smoothness could be dependent, that could be different. Okay, to, to represent this situation, so we assume that there is a, some permutation pi. So this is a little bit stronger assumption, but there, there, assume, there is a, some permutation pi, such that the, the output to, to some, 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 some index is given by the permutation of the input sequence. And, and it is, so for us, you, you, you permit the, 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 the token, the, the input sequence, depending on the, 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 the importance, okay? So, so you, you sort the input sequence according to the importance. So, so the, the first talk, so, so, so the first token is, is, is uh, that the most important token is uh, at first and the, the second token is in the, in the second, second. So, so in, in that case, we, in that sense, we permute the input sequence by pi. And then this permitted sequence is inputted to some fixed function f. This is a really strong condition that we assume this structure. Okay, so here's a little bit more um, detailed ex uh, um, uh, illustrations. So this is a, like a translation task. So maybe input is this is a pen. So then this and the pen would be more important than other words. And if the input is this cat is cute, so then cat and cute are more important, could be more important than other words. So this means that the important, that the place, the location of the input tokens are different depending on the input X. So then, and to represent the, the importance, we, we consider that there is a, we, we assume that there is a, some important score function mu i x. So this means that for input x, there are how, imp how important the token i is. So then the, the, according to the value of the mu i x, so we sort the, 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 the tokens like this. Okay, so in, in the decreasing, or, decreasing um, order of the mu i x, we you sort the, you want to permute the input sequence like this, and this is inputted to some function f. Okay, so so in, in other words, you you pick up the important important tokens, so in in a in a decreasing order, so then that is fed in some function f. So this is our, our model. Okay, so something like this. Okay, so but uh, okay. Uh, now we assume some other constraints like, like so, okay, so what, what kind of function f so we support? So we, we suppose that the function f or the important score mu is included in some function class, so-called gamma smooth function class. 
So what is the gamma smooth function class? So this is defined uh, like this. Okay, so the gamma smooth function class is a function class that can take the infinite dimensional sequence as an input. So it is a very complicated, so I, I don't uh, explain so much about this one. But anyway, so for the gamma smooth function class, there are some smoothness structures like a mixed smoothness and an atmospheric smoothness. So this is a more intuition here, okay. So for the input xi, so there is a lot of smoothness ai. So this is the same as what I said in the previous slide. So ai represents a smoothness toward ice direction, okay, ice coordinate. And so for, for each direction, it, that the function f in this function class has a different smoothness. So maybe so for the ice coordinate, it has a smoothness ai. So then the, the, this, this is defined by like, like this, the function f in this function class has this norm. So the norm, that the, this norm should be bounded if f is included in this function class. The, the, in, the, in, the, in the norm, so this is something like a, the solar space, okay? You take the ai times differentiation of f with respect to the xi, so the ice coordinate, or in other words, ice tokens. Then we calculate its L2 norm. So we assume this is bounded. Okay. So then so then so you can see that AI represents a smoothness toward the ice direction. Okay. And so then so I, I, as I said, so we sort the X by using the, 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 the dependency. Mm -hmm. And after that, we, we feed that sorted sequence to some to the function F. So then the, as an as a as an assumption of the true functions, we assume that the, the, the smoothness should increase as the goal, i goes to infinity. So the in, importance should decrease as, as the index goes up, so then the smoothness should go up. So the, the less, important, less important features has a, has, has a larger smoothness. Okay. So that is our assumption. But, but anyway, so we assume some of this kind of assumption. So sorry, there are many assumptions. But, but uh, Okay, so then this is a result. Um, okay, so under these assumptions, so we have this kind of estimation errors. Okay, um, yeah. So basically, we consider the, the, the empirical risk minimization. So um, we pick up some long range of a sequence of the output. Then, for each output, we can calculate the mean squared error, the empirical mean squared errors. So then we then we sum up them. So then, then so we, we we basically minimize this loss function, the empirical loss that is defined by squared loss. So then, so, the, so we, we minimize this in, in a class of the transformer uh, networks. Then so if you, if you set the, the, the size of the transformer network appropriately, then you get this estimation error bound. Okay, so now F hat is the estimated transformer network and if all is a true function, the mean squared error between the true function and the estimated transformer can be bounded by this quantity. Okay, so you can see that the so rate of convergence is uh, completely defined by the smoothness parameters. So um, yeah, even though the, 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 the input is infinite dimensional, so we have uh, the, this kind of uh, polynomial, or polynomial order convergence. Okay, so, so if you uh, assume that unstructured smoothness of the true function, so then a dagger is defined by the inverse of the sum, sum of a inverse. So if a dagger is uh, positive, we have a um, polynomial order convergence or the, uh, the, the estimation errors. Okay. So we can show that this is nearly minimax optimal. So in that sense, the transformer can achieve the nearly minimax optimal rate in, in a sense of a non-parametric regression, uh, non-parametric non estimation errors, okay? Yeah, it's coming from the log n. Uh, yeah, that's right. So the polylog n, so up to polylog n, so this is a minimax optimal. So yeah, so this means that, so the transformer can, can train or run, so how to choose the important features, so it can, yeah, it can find a way, so way, way to choose the important features, and also it can optimally estimate uh, some nonlinear um, relation between input and output. So that be, because because transformer can choose important features, so then it, it can avoid the the, the causal dimensionality. And moreover, this is a very, very different from the usual sparse estimation. In the in the sparse estimation, the important features are fixed for all input, but in the transformers. Depending on the input sequence, it can dynamically change, dynamically um, choose the important features. So this is a uh, very different from the usual sparse estimation. Okay. But anyway, so transformer can do that. So this is a very different from uh, maybe maybe CNN and uh, some other uh, models. Okay. So because the um, the the next next topic is uh, the diffusion model. So yeah. So we are working on some uh, many. Uh, so we are working on to, to analyze our uh, the modern. The uh, structure of the neural network, but uh, 
Okay, so this is the minimum optimality of diffusion model. So this is this is this is this is done by the Kazato, so he's over there. So he he talked about this one so last uh, last night's uh, poster. So I I don't go much details. Just I I show some some overview of this. So by one slide. So if you are interested in, so please discuss in your know, coffee break time. Okay, so diffusion model. So I think you are very familiar to diffusion model. So in the diffusion model, there is a forward process and a backward process. In the forward process, we start from some true distribution, and then by applying something like an OU process, that 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 distribution is is a, is a transformed to the Gaussian distribution like this. So like the noise. So then in the, in the backward process, we start from the Gaussian distribution and we gradually change the distribution to the true functions. So this can be realized by this statistic, uh, stochastic differential equations. Okay? By applying, by, by running this stochastic differential equations, you can change the, the, the Gaussian distribution to the, the target distributions. So this is a, a diffusion model. Okay, okay so but the, to run the debug about the process, you need, you need to know the, the, the score function, the true function. So this depends on the distribution of the true functions. Okay, so P, Pt is the distribution of xt in the, the forward process, but it, it, it is determined by uh, the true function. So we don't know this one. So we need to estimate this one. So then the, people usually consider the empirical score matching to estimate the, this, uh, the score functions. So, okay, so this is uh, basically the, the empirical L2 distance between this one and S. So we can, S, we can uh, empirically compute this uh, uh, errors. And so suppose that we have some empirical risk, risk minimizer of this loss on a deep neural network model. Then so this estimator achieves a minimax optimal rate to, in, in terms of the, the, the distribution estimator. Okay, so let, let y hat be the output from the, the backward process where the true score is replaced by the estimated scores. So then the, the generated sample has a distribution which, is, which, is, uh, which has a TV distance from the true distribution. Uh, that is bounded by this quantity. So we can sh show that this is a minimax optimal. So S represents the smoothness for the density function of the true, fun true, the true density function. Okay. And moreover, we can show that uh, what's a strange distance bound, and this is also minimax optimal. But the interesting thing is that for the what's a strange distance, the rate of convergence depends on the intrinsic dimensionality of the data. We suppose that if the data is distributed on, on sub some subspace, that, that dimensionality of that is D prime, so which could be much smaller than the entire space. So then the rate of convergence depends on the, the sub the dimensionality of the subspace. Then you can escape, you can you can avoid the cause of dimensionality. Okay. Okay, so then so uh, so final so five or ten minutes. So I want a little bit to talk about the uh, optimization. Okay. So sorry, so I changed my topic completely. So. Okay, so here, so I, I will talk about the mean field arrangement dynamics to optimize the two-layer neural networks. Okay, so this is a joint work with Atsushi Nitanda and Deni Wu. So Atsushi did a very good work that initiated the sequence of this kind of work. So this is very good. Okay, so oh, anyway, so I start, I, I, I talk, uh, I want to explain briefly about this topic. Okay, so, so now I, I want to optimize the so-called mean field neural network. So what is the new, mean field neural network? So suppose that we have M neurons in the two-layer neural network, we have M neurons. We take their average. We take their average, so like the, we, we sum up the, the output of neurons, and then we take we, we multiply one over n. So this is just average of the many neurons. So in the mean field in the mean field analysis, we take n to infinity. So then the, this average could converge to this kind of expectations. Okay, this is an expectation of the output of the neural networks with respect to the, the parameters R and W. So here mu is a distribution of the parameters R and W. So the R and W are the parameters of the neurons. And then, yeah, so we have the expectations. So the good point of this representation is that this is a linear functional with respect to the distribution mu. So if you look at the parameters R and W, so this is a nonlinear. But if you look at the distribution itself, so this is a linear functional. So then it is very easy to handle. So then so basically you want to optimize the mu so, so that is our, our important viewpoint. Okay, so the mean field arrangement to optimize this two-layer two neural network can be um, can be written like this. So this appeared in the, yesterday's talk by Leniak. Uh, the, basically, the, the mean field arrangement want to optimize this object function with respect to some distributions. So now the distribution mu is a, the distribution of the, of the parameters in our settings. But anyway, so let us consider some convex functional over some probability measure. 
uh, plus some regularity sometimes. So the regular time is, is basically entropy down, entropy. Okay? We add some entropy. Okay, so we, we, we basically do a gradient descent to optimize this objective in a major space. The gradient descent is obtained, it can be done by Wasserstein gradient flow. Okay? So Wasserstein gradient flow do a kind of gradient descent in a, in a, in a major space. So then maybe it is, as, it is uh, expected that the Wasserstein gradient flow will converge to the global optimal solution of this object function. Okay. So, okay, so this term corresponds to the gradient for this term, this term corresponds to the gradient for this term. Okay, uh, so this is a, uh, yeah, so this is a partial differential equation of the distribution mu, mu t. So then as t goes to infinity, mu t will come to the global optimal. So that is uh, what I expect. And so, and, and, and also, so you can notice that this partial differential equation, the, the Wasserstein gradient flow is a focal plank equation of this stochastic differential equations, okay? And so, yeah, so in the drift time, there is a fast variation of mu of distribution mu. So this is a kind of, of a functional derivative of, of the, 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 the functional f. But, but anyway, so, so taking the, 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 the derivative, which is to the mu, and we take the gradient of this function. So then this is the drift term. And so corresponding to this term, so we have, a, uh, we, uh, so the, there is a, a Brownian motion term. Okay. Um, so anyway, so in this, this is stochastic, in this stochastic differential equations, the drift term depends on the distribution of xt. So here mu t is uh, the distribution of xt. So that there is a correspondence between mu t and uh, the each path uh, solution xt. So so then so this depends on the, the distribution mu t. So it is called a distribution dependent SDE. Okay. So if you apply this um, infinite arrangement to optimize the two-layer infinite neural networks, then we obtain this um, um, dynamics. Okay. So in, in the drift time, so we, we need to calculate the gradient of the fast variation of the objective f. So but if you use if you consider the loss function as um, functional f. So then we obtain this um, the, 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 the drift term. So, okay, so the loss function f can be defined by like this. Here, f mu is a mean field neural network with infinite widths, with a, corresponding to the distribution mu. And we assume that li, the loss function li is a, a convex function, like a squared loss or the logistic loss, loss or whatever. So then, so because f mu is linear to the distribution mu, so then this should be the convex. Uh, so this is a linear and this is a convex. So then this should be convex a functional with respect to the distribution mu. And we also add some edge to regularize here. So this is a linear to the distribution mu. So this, this is also convex uh, with respect to the distribution mu. So, so then f mu is a, a convex uh, functional. Okay, so uh, the, the first derivative, first order, uh, first, first order variation of mu can be given by like this. In, in the first term, there is, a, 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 so we apply a kind of a chain rule. The, the first, so, so here appears the gradient of the, loss, the no, no, derivative of the loss function. And after that, we take the derivative of f mu with respect to the distribution mu. But because f mu is linear to the mu, so that the, it's, it's, it's derivative is like, like this, hx, the integrand is coming up. And after that, so we take the derivative of the regular term, so then the x square is coming here. But anyway, so we, we have an exit form of all the, 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 the drift term like this. But, so, but, but the problem is that, so this is a continuous time dynamics, and also there's a distribution mu t. So, um, for example, yeah, so then we need to approximate this by a, a finite, uh, no, 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 the discrete time dynamics, and also the distribution mu t should be approximated by something, some other, uh, uh, other the tractable form. So to approximate the distribution mu t, so we prepare the n particles. So suppose that we have n particles, then, and so we, we replace mu t by the empirical distribution of the n particles. In other words, instead of using the infinite with this neural network, we use a finite with this neural network. So instead of infinite with this, we use uh, n with this neural network. Then apply the, just a gradient Langevin dynamics. So yeah, that is our, okay, I skipped here. For this mean field Langevin dynamics, we have a convergence analysis like this, so there's a Nitanda, U and Suzuki, and uh, the Nyak Chizat, so we have exponential convergence. But this is a, a continuous time dynamics and an infinite with this network. So we have discretized it by finite, finite with this network and uh, discrete time dynamics, so but yeah, so we have proposed a double loop method initiated by PDA, and so the following, following work is a PSDCA. 
But anyway, so we, we have our, 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 our some convergence guarantee. But the problem is that, so these are a little bit cons very conservative. So to guarantee the convergence, that this method is a kind of a conservative method. And also this is a double loop and the implementation is a little bit complicated. So we need more, more simple single loop method. Okay. So, but uh, to show the convergence for the single loop method, there's a pro problem with so-called propagation of chaos. So yes, yeah, so I, I don't explain much about the propagation of chaos. Anyway, so there's some mathematical difficulties to show the convergence of a single loop method. But in last year, uh, there was uh, some kind of theoretical developments about this that we have a rate of convergence. Okay, so, so what is single loop method? Okay, so, but I, 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 should, I should stop uh, soon, okay. Okay, so in a single loop method, so instead of uh, the, the, the continuous dynamics, time dynamics, we consider the discrete time dynamics. This is like a Euler Mariama scheme. And uh, so the, the full gradient can be approximated by the stochastic gradient. And also the, the distribution mu t is uh, represented by the n particles. So for, in, in, instead of infinite bits, we consider a finite bits network. Okay, for, for those three approximations, so we can derive some approximation errors like this. So yeah, so this is uh, um, how, how the object function decrease after the one step. So, but, but I skip to here. So for example, if you consider just a stochastic gradient uh, mean field range matrix, so, so, so okay, so the, 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 the gradient is replaced by some stochastic gradient, you have this rate of commodities after the k-step iterations. This is a time discretization error. This is a, a finite with this uh, uh, approximation error. This is coming from stochastic approximation error. So anyway, so by setting the step size appropriately and the number of iteration uh, is set like this, then we have an epsilon accuracy, okay? So for example, if, uh, in, in a special, as a special case, if the mini batch size is set like this appropriately, so then after log epsilon inverse divided by epsilon iterations, you get a epsilon accuracy. So this is a completely um, discretized um, uh, algorithm and we have this uh, component, so, uh, yeah, guarantee. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very okay, much. Thank you very much.